Okay, so in this series of Q and A's, I'm going to go into the next question that has come up. This is uh, was in the comments area of my uh, video on the myth of MB2, talking about the reality that MB2 is present in a majority of cases of your maxillary molars, maxillary first and second molar. And this doctor left a message that root canals do not fail even if you skip MB2 because MB2 uh, do not have separate apex. So I guess this doctor is saying that because MB2 canals do not have a separate apex, that it shouldn't result into a root canal failure as a result of not treating the MB2. Now, this is a question that if you think of things in macroscopic view, it may make sense. Unfortunately, endodontics is in a macroscopic procedure. It is a microbiological management procedure. And while it is true that the majority of the mesiobuccal roots of um, maxillary first and second molars, according to Coolit, have an MB2 histologically being present up to 92% of the cases, and clinically, you really are on a, on a frankly, a, a more reasonable basis. You can get into a good 80 to 90% of them, frankly. It's also true that the majority of them, let's say close to 80% of them, have a joint, they join before the apex of the tooth, leading to a single exit. However, this also means that based on the studies, anywhere from 19 to 24% of them, or almost a quarter of them, if you want to round it up here, have a separate exit. So it is true that in those you know, other 75%, you may get away without having a problem if you don't treat the MB2. The reality of it is that while you do get away with it in the short run, in the long run, it will cause a problem that will take time to develop. And the reason for that is the same reason if you leave decay behind underneath a filling or under a crown, it isn't it is as if the carious material is going to all of a sudden miraculously die and go away. There are many specific species and uh, microbes that can self-preserve and persist, and it will take them a much longer time in the absence of overt access to nutrients to grow and proceed, but in time, they will be able to use their collagenases to break down collagen and dentin matrix and move forward. And it's part of the reason why many of these types of failures in endodontic therapy with missed canals don't necessarily occur in the short run, and they do take a few years to develop. And that's part of the problem with this false sense of security that many people have, where they think that it's, everything is gonna be fine, it could be fast and sloppy, because in the short run, you may get away with it, but in the long run, it always will come back and, and uh, bite you in the back. So here's the problem that if you were to just quickly draw, you would see that if you have a mesiobuccal root, let's just draw a quick mesiobuccal root here of a maxillary molar. So while the MB2 is present, as I mentioned, in the majority of the cases, also in the majority of the cases, the MB2 will join the MB1. Sometimes people are unable to find the MB2, so they go ahead and they treat the MB1 with the resulting MB2 being untreated. Now, this would result into two separate case scenarios. In the cases in which the beginning case is necrotic, now you're going to have a much bigger problem than a case in which the tissue was vital and you were doing the endo, maybe prophylactically, in which the pulp was actually sterile. So as long as you didn't introduce any microbes there, it's a chance that it would not be a problem down the line. But in cases in which there was necrosis, that means that there is, in fact, microbes living inside this other MB2 that is going to take time to work its way around and almost in the form of coronal leakage and then get out and cause a separate problem. And you see these types of problems, these lesions develop in these types of cases, not within the first few months, not within the first year or two. I have personally, and it's, you may think of this anecdotally, but you know, once you've done 28, 29,000 cases over 30, 30 years or so, you do see patterns emerge that is kind of considered data, if you will, uh, if you apply a little bit of uh, 
kind of rational and critical thinking to this, you realize that there are these patterns that develop as a clinician you see in the later part of your career. And you see that most of these types of cases end up having failures anywhere from two to eight years after the treatment has been done. And these lesions that develop periapically may oftentimes be asymptomatic, and that is oftentimes due to this missed MB2 that is untreated. So while it is true that the MB2 in majority of cases joins the MB1, leaving content inside the infected content inside the MB2 and only treating the MB1 is only postponing the inevitable as the microbes work their way and the biofilm persistence will work its way around this, uh, the, the filling that you've done in MB1 and will get out over time. It just takes longer. And uh, it's possible that in some cases as well, it may just kind of be arrested and we may die, die off the microbes that are in the MB2. But uh, many of them also form spores. And if there is coronal leakage down the line, then they will get reactivated and you will end up having a, a de novo infection as a result of that. So keep that in mind. Do not take the concept of MB2 and not treating the MB2 lightly. It is a serious matter. It is the equivalent of not treating a whole tooth in your mouth, and it is very important to know that. Now, nowadays we're lucky because we have three-dimensional imaging. CBCTs are telling us, are able to tell us, in almost 99% of the cases, whether we do have an MB1 or MB2, and also in a large number of cases, they can tell us if it joins the MB1 or MB uh, or not as well. So what type of configuration do we have? Is it a type three separate exits? or is it a type two, um, or even if it's a type four. Most of them, as we mentioned, is a type two because they join, but also in about 20% of them are type three in which we have two separate exits. Those you definitely have to treat, otherwise you're gonna end up having symptoms much earlier and those cases are gonna fail much sooner. All right, another long video <laughs> question answering, uh, but I think this is an important one, guys. Do not take the uh, MB2 lightly and uh, don't uh, mistake the fact that they join for, the, uh, for a, an excuse for not treating it. All right, guys, so that's it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video where we can answer a few more questions on the different topics. But we will then know. I'm Ali and I say, now let's save some teeth.